Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by an active learning platform, Visdolia. In this session, let's learn a very important topic in cardiovascular pathology, that's aortic dissection. It's also referred to as dissecting aneurysm. So in the next 10 minutes or so, we will look into the etiopathogenesis, the morphology, the classification, clinical features, diagnosis, treatment and prognosis of dissecting aneurysm or aortic dissection. So what is this aortic dissection? Now consider that this is a normal aorta and that's the aneurysmal dilatation of the aorta. This is the dissection, right? So aortic dissection is a condition where there is a tear in the aortic intima which allows the blood to enter into its wall and that's the tunica media, thus creating a new blood-filled channel. So, this condition is referred to as aortic dissection. It is generally associated with aortic dilatation. Though they say it is dissecting aneurysm, it's actually a misnomer because it is actually a form of hematoma which is formed within the vascular wall, within the wall of the aorta. But what is important to know is this can be disastrous because if the dissection ruptures through the adventitia, then you can have catastrophic hemorrhage into the adjacent space causing death. So, the aortic dissection can occur in two groups of patients. One, men aged 40 to 60 years, that is 5th to 7th decade of life with antecedent hypertension. This is the most common one, occurring in around more than 90% of cases. And the second group of patients are the younger ones with syndromic diseases affecting the aorta, for example, Marfan syndrome. Aortic dissections can also be iatrogenic where, you know, when, when uh, after an arterial cannulation during the diagnostic catheterization or cardiopulmonary bypass can be seen in pregnancy because, you know, there will be hormonally induced vascular remodeling and the hemodynamic stresses of the parental period predisposes to aortic dissection. Please note that if there is significant atherosclerosis, if there is scarring of the tunica media, then the dissecting aneurysm is extremely unusual. The reason for this is, for the dissection to occur, for the blood to seep into the tunica media, the media should be degenerated, right? The media should have undergone necrotic change or weakening of the tunica media. So, the pathogenesis of aortic dissection, the most important thing which we need to understand is that the tear, you know, in the intima is the initiating event. And these tears are always transverse or oblique tears. The trigger for the intimal tear and intramural hemorrhage into aorta is not known in most of the cases. It is assumed that it's because of the sheer hemodynamic uh, pressure in the hypertensive patients. There can be, you know, spontaneous tear in the tunica intima. Hypertension is the major risk factor for these tears to occur. The reason why there is dissection in patients of hypertension is that in these patients, there can be medial degeneration due to smooth muscle cell loss as well as altered extracellular matrix component or the content. The other mechanism is that there could be defective transforming growth factor beta signaling and there also will be defective extracellular matrix synthesis or there can be increased degradation of extracellular matrix. Patients with cocaine abuse, you know, they can also have abrupt transient increase in blood pressure leading on to predisposition for intimal tears and thereby aortic dissections. Patients with inherited or acquired connective tissue disorders, for example, Marfan syndrome, Heller-Danlos syndrome, type 4, these are the patients who will be having abnormal aortic extracellular matrix, which can lead to weakening of the vessel wall. Sometimes, defects in the copper metabolism can also lead to medial necrosis of the aorta, thereby leading to weakening of the tunica media, which can predispose to dissection whenever there is an intimal tear. So, if at all you want to remember one thing for the aortic dissection is weakness of the aortic connective tissue irrespective of the cause. It can be spontaneous, it can be inherited or acquired defects of the connective tissue itself, ultimately leading on to weakness of the 
aortic connective tissue so remember once the tear occurs because of the systemic pressure the blood enters the arterial wall dissects through the media and remember this dissection in the media occurs within seconds you know and once it dissects through the media there is progression of the hematoma and the false lumen may be dilated and it is for this reason it was referred to as dissecting aneurysm or dissecting aneurysm because of the dilatation of the aortic wall so morphologically the point of origin of the tear is usually within 10 cm of the aortic wall as i told you it can it is transverse or oblique usually around 1 to 5 cm long the tear is around 1 to 5 cm long and it almost always have the sharp jagged edges plane of dissection once the dissection occurs you know the blood can extend either retrograde towards the heart or distally as far as femoral vessels remember this is the uh, you know illustration showing the tunica intima and the pink one is the tunica media that's the tunica adventitia so the plane of dissection is almost always between the middle and the outer third of the tunica media right so it is between the middle and the outer third of the tunica media or it can also be between the tunica media and the adventitia right so this is the tunica media this is the adventitia it can be between the tunica media and the adventitia but the most common plane is between the middle and the outer thirds of the tunica media see once the dissection occurs there can be two outcomes one it can rupture through the adventitia and the blood can come out of the aortic wall leading to massive hemorrhage okay it can lead to massive hemorrhage into the thor thoracic or abdominal cavities second it can enter into the pericardium leading on to cardiac tamponade okay so that is also fatal the second outcome is the blood can re enter the lumen through a second tear which is usually distal to the first tear and once that happens there is a formation of new false vascular channel and the aortic wall becomes you know double barrel you 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 have two lumen one is a true lumen another is a false lumen that's why it is called as double barrel aorta and this wall over a period of time is endothelized that means endothelial lining is formed and then this condition is referred to as chronic dissection look at this this is the first point of intimal tear there is a dissection and this is a second distal tear and through the distal tear the blood comes back into the lumen forming a false lumen here look at this this is the original lumen and that is a false lumen this is referred to as double barrel aorta microscopically the characteristic feature is cystic medial degeneration do i say cystic medial degeneration this is a misnomer because it is not cystic it's not actually degeneration basically it is a smooth muscle cell dropout and necrosis there is fragmentation of elastic tissue there is accumulation of amorphous proteoglycan rich extracellular matrix okay this is a softened area that looks as if it is a cystic in nature that's why it was referred to as cystic medial degeneration but note that there will be no inflammation in this cystic medial degeneration now how do you classify aortic dissections there is a standard stanford classification which classifies into proximal and distal type a and type b type of aortic dissection where type a meaning the dissection involve the ascending aorta whereas type b does not involve the ascending aorta it's as simple right type a and type b whereas type a is further categorized depending upon whether the involvement of descending aorta is there or not if there is involvement of the descending aorta i mean the dissection involving the descending aorta then it is called as debaki type 1 if there is no involvement of the descending aorta and involves only the ascending aorta then it is called as debaki type 2 whereas the distal one usually the dissection begins beyond the subclavian artery the tear the initial point of dissection is beyond the subclavian artery right so this is the baki type 3 why it is important to note that there are two important ways of classification that's because proximal and type a kind of dissections are extremely fatal they are the ones which have most serious complications
what are the clinical features how do these patients manifest the classic clinical symptom is sudden onset of excruciating tearing or stabbing kind of pain which begins in the anterior chest and then radiates to the back between the scapulae and then move downwards as the dissection progresses this is the classical clinical manifestation of somebody who is having aortic dissection and the most common cause of death in these patients are rupture of the dissection into the pericardial pleural or peritoneal cavity leading on to massive hemorrhage other causes uh, you know of uh, clinical manifestations include retrograde dissection into the aortic root thereby causing disruption of the valvular apparatus of the aorta or they can compress the coronary arteries because we know at the root of the aorta you have origin of coronary arteries thereby causing cardio symptoms and manifestations the other manifestations can also include extension of the dissection to the great arteries you know all the arteries and then it can result in obstruction of the organs supplied by those arteries for example if there is obstruction of the dissection extending into the renal artery then there can be renal arterial occlusion as well because of the dilatation of the aorta in due to dissection there can be spinal artery compression leading on to transverse myelitis these are some of the manifestations of aortic dissection how do you diagnose aortic dissection of course in a patient with uh, hypertension long standing hypertension the classical clinical presentation itself is diagnostic uh, sudden hypertension in a known hypertensive and there can be difference in the blood pressure in two dif in in different limbs that is also a clue to say that this person might be having aortic dissection there can be loss of one or more arterial pulses you can hear the aortic regurgitation murmur of course radiological diagnosis by either ultrasound or ct scan confirms the diagnosis how do you treat aortic dissection see type a aortic dissections are medical emergencies it has to be handled with utmost care you have to give intensive antihypertensive therapy most of the times it will be with surgical intervention type b are the ones which can be managed conservatively by giving long term hypertensive treatment prognosis depending upon which type you are dealing with type a have ha bad prognosis you know you have 70% mortality who present with hemorrhage or who present with symptoms related to distal ischemia which means that the dissection is so much that it has caused obstruction 10 year survival rate is around 40 to 80 88% depending upon if 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 you no know, if this is a surgical candidate or depending upon other prognostic parameters this 10 year survival rate is around 40 to 88% type b is relatively you know less complicated there is around 75% survival rate so that completes aortic dissection if you want to know how you have understood this topic i would suggest you to click on the practice session below in the comment section as well as in the description this is from visdolia which is an active learning platform you can solve multiple choice questions you can solve clinical scenario based questions and you can also receive feedback if you go wrong in answering or attempting those questions it is fun to learn i would suggest you to try and enjoy learning so that completes aortic dissection thank you for watching if you have liked this hit a like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and do share if you find this video useful and don't forget to try attempting the practice session thank you